Let's first see how water is supplied. Most of Kyoto's water is brought from Lake Biwa via the Lake Biwa Aqueduct. This raw water flowing down the aqueduct is unprocessed water that will eventually be processed into tap water. It is sent to purification plants where it goes through several stages that transform it into safe tap water and then is sent to homes in Kyoto City. Therefore, the water in all homes is safe to drink. Tell me about the Lake Biwa Aqueduct. The Lake Biwa Aqueduct is a waterway constructed at the beginning of the Meiji era to bring water to Kyoto from Lake Biwa. The water was used for farming, power generation, and other purposes. Japan's first hydroelectric power plant for industrial use was established here in Keage. Did you use this water to generate electricity? That's right. This power led to the construction of new factories and the establishment of streetcars, the foundation of present-day Kyoto. The water from the aqueduct is still used for tap water and power generation. Wow! So, water from the Lake Biwa aqueduct brings life to Kyoto City. Water that brings life. Water from the aqueduct is sent to an end lake basin where trash, algae, and sand are removed. The water is next sent via pipes and conduits to three water purification plants. Each purification plant plays an important role. The purification plants turn raw water into tap water. Let's now do an experiment that shows how water is purified. Sounds like fun! Let's get started! Okay, here we go! The water in this beaker is unprocessed water. Yes, the water is murky. It doesn't look like drinking water at all. Right! Mixed into the water is sand and other impurities, including bacteria not visible to the human eye. Okay, now we'll try to purify this water. How's that? First, let's add a chemical that coagulates the impurities and bacteria, and then stir the mixture. Is this what I should add? Yes. Let me pour it. Something is forming in the water. That's right. Sand and other impurities coagulate into lightweight lumps. These small lumps are called flock. If we let the water sit for a while, the lumps will settle to the bottom. This is called sediment. Please remember this because it will appear again later. Okay. Sediment. I won't forget it. Next, we'll send this water through a layer of sand and gravel. This process is called filtration. See? The water dripping down is clean. Really? The water is completely different. In fact, water for purification plants carry out this process to purify raw water on a daily basis. Wow, that's hard work. So, now let's see how it's actually done at the purification plant. Okay! okay. First, 
This is a receiving well. It's the first step in the process of purifying raw water. This is where the amount of water for purifying is adjusted. Next is the chemical mixing basin, where chemicals that coagulate the impurities in bacteria and sterilizing chlorine are added and mixed well. Their specifications are regulated by the government. Then, the water and chemicals are slowly mixed here in the flock formation basin, which converts the impurities and bacteria into large clumps that sink easily. After this, the clumps sink into the floor of the sedimentation basin. You can see them slowly sinking. Then, only the top layer of clear water is sent to the filtration basin. Here, in the rapid filtration basin, impurities and bacteria invisible to the human eye are completely removed by filtering the water through activated layers of sand and gravel. These steps are the same to the experiment we just did. What's happening here? The sand must be periodically cleaned to remove impurities and bacteria that collect during filtering so they do not impede filtration. The water is then sent to the chlorine mixing basin where chlorine is added for sterilization. At last, the water is safe to use and drink. Workers here in the central control room carefully monitor the entire purification plant and its machinery. Staff work constantly 365 days a year checking to make sure all the machinery is operating properly. This is very important to ensure the provision of safe tap water. After this, how is the water sent to everyone's homes? First, the water is sent to distribution reservoirs through large water pipes. Pumps are employed to send water to reservoirs located at higher elevations than the purification plants. This is a distribution reservoir where tap water is stored. From here, water is sent via pipes to homes in accordance with the amount being used. There are three such water purification plants in Kyoto, aren't there? That's right. Let's now take a look at the three plants in the city. First, we have the Keage Water Purification Plant. Japan's first purification plant to employ the rapid sand filtration process. It was the first plant to supply the city with tap water. This is the Matsugasaki water purification plant. Located above one of the five bonfires lit during an annual summer festival, it also has a distribution reservoir to store the water it processes. And finally, we have the Shin Yamashina water purification plant. Kyoto's largest purification plant, it provides water to about half of the city. Other purification plants are found in the city's mountainous regions. Water supplied from each purification plant flows from faucets like this. That's great, isn't it? We can drink good tasting tap water anywhere. Moreover, the cost of tap water in Kyoto City is some one four hundredth the cost of bottled mineral water. That's, That's cheap. cheap! 
It's now time for another quiz question. What's the total distance of water supply lines in Kyoto City? 1. Approximately 400 kilometers, the distance between Kyoto and Tokyo. 2. Approximately 2,500 kilometers, the distance between Hokkaido and Okinawa. Or 3. Approximately 4,200 kilometers, the distance between Kyoto and Bangkok, the capital of Thailand, which is located in Southeast Asia. Number 1. 400 kilometers. It's only supply lines in Kyoto City. Kyotaro, you're wrong. It's more because water is sent to all homes in the city. The correct answer is 2,500 kilometers. You're both. The answer is number 3. Approximately 4,200 kilometers. That's the distance between Kyoto and Bangkok, the capital of Thailand. Water supply lines that carry water from purification plants to each home are buried under streets like a huge net. Although you can't see them, their total length is about 4,200 kilometers. That's amazing, isn't it? Really? That's, That's believable. believable. But doesn't that much piping need repairing? Yes, it does. Have a look at this. When an underground water pipe bursts, flooding can occur over a wide area. Therefore, the Water Supply and Wastewater Management Bureau conducts regular inspections to make sure there aren't any broken or leaking pipes, nor any old pipes that need replacement. Since it's really important that tap water is safe to drink, Kyoto City periodically takes water samples from Lake Biwa, the source of its drinking water. Of the many criteria to ensure water is pure and safe to drink, our Water Quality Laboratory conducts 200 different tests. In addition, we have equipment that automatically tests the water and monitors water quality 24 hours a day. That is why Kyoto's tap water is always safe and good tasting. I see. Really clean water. And it tastes good. I'm glad to hear you say that. We at the Kyoto City Water Supply and Wastewater Management Bureau continually work hard to supply everyone with safe, clean tap water. I have been taking the supply of tap water for granted. From now on, I won't forget the importance of tap water. Me too! I don't want to waste this good water, but I have to go to the men's room. You drank too much. <laughs>